Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina. You probably clicked on this video because you are short of time and your deadline for writing your master's thesis is quickly and rapidly approaching. And although I would strongly advocate for taking time to write your thesis and taking time to analyze your data, collect your um, results and um, take time writing a literature review, I can appreciate that that might not always be the case and sometimes you're left in the lurch and you have to write your thesis or your dissertation sort of the last in the last couple of weeks. The caveat is that I'm assuming that you have collected your data already, you've run your experiments, you've got all your results, you might have analysed something already. But first and foremost, I want you to think of your dissertation as a document that is broken up into six different sections. Now these sections are the abstract, the introduction or the lit review, the methods, the results, the discussion and the references and slash conclusion. So what I want you to do is think of it like that and plan to write the sections separately. And what this does is it helps you kind of disintegrate the information that you have to put together and it helps you think of it as six slightly different entities. And what this does is it minimizes the amount of work that you think you have to do in your head. And rather than think of it as I have to write this massive essay or this, I have to compile this massive dissertation, rather you're thinking of it, of it as I have Right, I can do the methods in a day or two, right? The lit review will take me probably a week. This makes it a little bit easier by breaking it down into bite-sized pieces. Always start with the method section because this section is the easiest to write. It's based on purely facts. I mean, you've done the experiments already. What happens is once you've completed the section, you'd feel a sense of accomplishment and you probably would be more likely to kind of keep on writing as opposed to trying to start from the introduction or the literature review and feeling a bit more demotivated when you're kind of stuck as to what to write about. The results are a section that you probably have um, kind of compiled already. Here you want to report the findings that you discussed in the methods. Following this I'd move on to the introduction section and this is probably going to take you the kind of the largest bulk of your time because it really does require a sort of thorough review of the um, literature. It is a section that really requires you to discuss and critically evaluate the research that is out there that relates to your paper. What are you basing your research on? What is the basis of um, your hypothesis? Where are you building up what you, you're talking about from? So this section is quite important and it's a section that I would definitely spend sort of the most time on. I do have a video that I'll put up here and I'll link down below for how to do a literature search. Um, it is very important. I think it really makes a difference between having a really good and a really strong lit review and having one that um, seems like you haven't done much. Then I'd move on to this, the discussion section and I do think that this is probably the most challenging section of a whole dissertation. In this section you want to have a sort of summary of your findings and you want to articulate what these findings mean and why they're important and how it adds to the current understanding of your particular discipline and your particular subject. So what what is it that you found out? How does this add to what we already know? And that is where the discussion is quite sort of I would say challenging to write and requires a bit more time than the other sections. You really want to identify why and how your research is novel it also includes the limitations, the implications of your study for sort of future work, for clinical trials. You also want to sort of conclude and critique your work with other pieces of work. So again, you want to make sure that you are really understanding where you stand in the field and in the discipline and how your work has added to what's currently out there. The abstract is the absolute last thing that you do once you've completed everything, that is what you write to sort of summarise um, a bit like a book, a bit like a blurb, what you are showing in your research. Again, I have a really good video about how to write an abstract which I'll link up here or down below, um, so go click on that to find out how to do that. And try to reference as you go along to help the process. Um, having, you know, giving yourself only a month to write a dissertation is a short time, so you don't want to end up spending sort of two days at the end fixing up references. It's much better if you sort of compile them as you go along. You can do them manually if you want and I would you know, I'd recommend this but I personally use Mendeley and I think it's an amazing, amazing referencing tool that you can sort of download a plugin for and use within your Word document as you're writing. Okay, so now that you've carved out your sort of schedule of how you're going to write your thesis, what you need to think about next is writing every single day. Now I know that sometimes you can lack motivation and sometimes it can be quite tough to pick up a pen or you know, open up your laptop and start writing, but it is really important that you do write every single day. If you're writing for a month, if you're trying to finish a thesis in just a month, wasting a day on, and not writing really would be a detriment to your to completing it um, on time. I'd also say to stop editing and to just write. A big inhibitor of writing fluently is the fact that we keep on checking our work as we go along. Now, as much as you know, the perfectionist in me will probably do the same thing. But what that does is it really inhibits you from moving forward if you keep going backwards. So what you need to do is just write and keep on writing and come to edit at the end. So maybe you'll decide 
at, you know, after two days, I'll edit a bit that I've done. Or after I finish this section, I'll edit the section. Um, what happens is if you edit as you go along, it really does slow you down. It really pulls you back and it makes you feel like what you've done isn't good enough. Use the 80-20 rule, and I've talked about this in the video previously, and again, I'll link this down below. Time yourself and know that 10 hours doesn't mean 10 hours of work, rather it means two hours of work, so you're better off just giving yourself a solid two hours and working from the start to the end of those two hours. Review papers will be your best friend, and they are your best friend. You want to be using review papers, because these papers have done it for you. They've gone into the literature, they've searched for the relevant papers, and they've compiled them and written kind of a synopsis of what that topic and the discipline is kind of, you know, where they're at at the moment. It means that you've got all the relevant papers and you've got the most up-to-date findings and the most up-to-date research there for you. What you can do then is find, go into that paper and read the sections that you're interested in and go to the primary research and the original papers that are discussed in that review paper to discuss into your own work. So it's kind of, it's not cheating at all, it's just being smart, it's working smart, especially if you only have one week, uh, one month. You don't have the time or the capacity to possibly read all the papers and find what is going to be suitable for your particular um, dissertation. But if you do want to start reading a couple of papers, then I would say that abstracts are your best friend. Abstracts are very, very clear, they're very clean. I absolutely love a good abstract. They synthesize the information so quickly where you can just see what the topic is, what the method is, what the findings are and how this applies and you can decide then or there whether you want to include that in your thesis or not. Um, and if you feel, feel like it's a compelling abstract and you want to go into it and you want to read more, go for it, download it, read it. But just stick to the abstract, don't try to read papers at this point because you'll end up going down this rabbit hole where you'll end up with lots of papers that you've read but not quite understood um, and you can't actually use them in your thesis anyway. This is probably the most important tip and it's to try to complete a first draft ASAP. By doing that, you've given yourself 20 days to get that first draft done so even if you don't manage to do anything else, you have something to hand in. But then you've given yourself 10 extra days to review what you've done. So you can go back to the lit review, you can kind of, you know, modify things, you can give it to someone to review, you can give it to someone to proofread, you can um, maybe add some data if you've missed something out, um, and you can perfect that even more. Make sure that you have something there. There's no point of spending the whole month and you know, not completing and it be kind of semi-perfect than having a completed dissertation that might not be you know, too up to, up to your standards. My last tip would be to try to save lazy activities for lazy days. Times when I was a bit bored or where I could kind of just put like a movie or some sort of show in the background and I'll get on with the kind of counting of cells and what that means is I'm still being productive during times when I may not have been otherwise. I hope that helped you think about some ways that you can write your thesis in the next month. There's nothing groundbreaking, there's no magical way of doing it. It does require dedication and commitment, um, but the key thing is to do something every single day and try to do it in the order that I suggested, starting from the methods first. Most of the time, the roadblock is ourselves, the mental block is brought upon by ourselves. So try to release that by starting something and then most likely you'll continue and want to kind of push through and get through it. Um, do leave me a comment down below and let me know if you try to write a thesis in a month and if you are successful, I hope you are. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll hope to see you in my next video. Bye.